Hi there, welcome. Come right on in. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be here. So glad you're there. So glad we can be together like this. And whether you regular viewer or brand new and you are so, so welcome. And we try to deal with those things that concern the home. And I, I don't know of anything more important really than the education of our children. And that's what we will be talking about today. So mothers, fathers, grandparents, really aunts and uncles, I think it's important that you listen and, and really take note of this program. My guest is a regular one. She comes on once a month to keep us informed. Her name is Heidi Janssen. She has two children and uh, she got into this situation, I would call it a battle, uh, when her 10 year old son brought home a math problem that Heidi couldn't do with, you know, with a really uh, great IQ. And so this is the way it all happened. Now we see Heidi in the newspapers and she is stirring things up in Tallahassee and I hope beyond that. So welcome her back. And I'm going to join Stephanie and we're going to make crab cakes. Oh my, my. I tell you, the best ones are around the Chesapeake Bay, around Maryland and so forth. As I've traveled in ministry, I've had the privilege of eating them there. I would say they're the best, but we'll see what we come up with here. In fact, this recipe is one from my sister uh, who was a pastor's wife and he, uh, David passed away a year ago, but she was a wonderful pastor's wife besides leading the choir and doing all the other things that pastor's wives do. She would entertain people in her home you know, if you had outside guests, usually you take them to a restaurant, but she would bring them to her house after Sunday night and all. And uh, this is one that she would fix once in a while for her guests. So we'll check it out. Uh, before I join Stephanie, though, I, I really like you to hear my heart. Uh, we are viewer supported. And I'm sure that thousands of you have watched regularly and you thought it was some time or another, you know, I really need to send that ministry. Uh, financial gift and so uh, let it be today all right uh, those things that you intend to do just let's just go ahead and do them and the address is on your screen if you want to write to us and that's box 6922 Clearwater Florida 33758 or you can call if you use your credit card or debit card that's 1-800-229-0059 and I do not have the words to tell you how much it is appreciated so thank you for that in advance. And we're over here with Stephanie and Hello. the crab cakes. Yes, you I'm make excited. Crab cakes before? No, but I'm excited. I love, you know I love seafood. Mm -hmm. You know I love crab because mm -hmm. my first date, I ate eight pounds. My first date with my husband, remember? Eight? Eight pounds of crab. I was not shy. No. <laughs> he asked her out a second time. He, that's yeah, kind of, that's crazy, right? Kind of, you know, really impressive so I he have to made an impression like evidently he, he said I like a girl he said who can well eat. he said I don't know if I can afford her <laughs> but we'll try this <laughs> so I have five um, cans of crab meat I'm gonna put in here with some peppers and breadcrumbs and parsley mm -hmm. you have two eggs you have mayonnaise scallions and salt and pepper you're gonna whip that all this all goes up, together okay? yes please all right yeah this is gonna be tasty I have uh, I have ordered crab cakes a lot, but I've never made them. Well, you know, um, Brooke is from Maryland, so she's going to be our crab cake. She's going to tell she'll us. She'll be the, uh, the, she's the professional She'll have the reviewer. final word on yeah. this. If it's not good, she just needs she'll, to keep her mouth shut. Us. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I kind of think you can depend on my sister, but we'll see. Well, sure. Well, will you act like you like it anyway? Yes, just Because she'll be watching. Yes. We don't want to hurt my Earthline sister. Yeah, her name's Dawn Feelings. Crabtree. Great pianist, great piano teacher, which is hard to find. Yes. If you're in the Boca Raton area, I don't know if she's got any openings or not, but. She's going to have people knocking at her door now. If I had a child, because we, we made our kids take music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either be musical or you're out of the family. That's our. Yeah, right. Um. Motto. You can put those scallions in too if you would. But I would, um, I would certainly uh, choose to have her for a teacher. And does this go in there? Yes. As soon Boy, as I get you know, I like anything colorful. Yeah, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let me get some breadcrumbs in here. 
And then we're going to put that. Ugh, you know what I smell? I smell peppers. <laughs> yes, please. Well, anybody who watches regularly know that knows that Stephanie does not like not peppers. A fan. But she likes green peppers the least. So Yes. But I like crab, so I'm hoping the crab overpowers. Do you ever um, order crab cakes in a restaurant? Um, occasionally I will. Mm -hmm. I'm a creature of habit when it comes to restaurants. We really need to ex expand you need to our horizons. Out, don't you? Yes, we live in Florida, you know, all these beach restaurants, uh -huh. and we go to our little hole I in the wall cafes. I ate a good cafes. one on the beach not too long ago that I didn't even know existed. And Where? It was marvelous. It's called Guppies. Have you ever heard of Guppies? I have. I've never been there. Food was awesome. Okay. All right. Is that oil hot? Yes. All right. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. We'll see how this does. Should I get in there with my hands? Why not? Lord made hands before yeah, people let's made do this. spoons. I washed them. Well, that hot grease out of Yeah, <laughs> killing I the washed germs. them and, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, this is going to be good. Oh, that makes a really good size... Uh, recipe. Yeah, this is going to make quite plenty of patties. Because I think uh, some of the crew might be worrying whether or not they would get one. Yes. Well, I have my plate ready and my fork to take my boss one. Cause oh, really? Yes. He'll love this. They are beautiful. Aren't they and, lovely? Uh, my sister just served them with a salad. Mm -hmm. um, and so often in restaurants, they're an uh, appetizer. Yeah, this could be my, a meal. My daughter for likes sure. them a lot. Look how lovely. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. So let's Okay, we'll that. let those go. Yes, I have some pictures to share. Oh, okay. So we had telethon last week. So I just wanted to show some be behind the scenes photos since if you've yeah. never been to a TV studio, I on a you don't know the glamour that happens right. behind the scenes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's a, there's my selfie, and you're getting ready Wanda. made up by Wanda. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. one of my favorite pictures. I love the look on your face. It's fabulous. Yes, it uh, shows she has no pride. Yes, and, well, look at me taking a selfie. Well, you okay. look really good. Yeah, that's our control, um, our A control room where all the magic happens. Mm -hmm. And it really is impressive in there. Well, it is it? impressive, especially compared to our last one, because yes. the last one was like a scary We've been dungeon. we moving on up. Yes, and then... Um, the green room where the guests are. I usually make meatballs, and we have uh, cheese and crackers and desserts and vegetables and, and stuff like that. And a fridge in there with water yes. and juices. Mm -hmm. and, and then yeah. I fe we feed the crew, she and we feed the, the crew. Well, me and Susan, we feed the crew, we feed the volunteers. This is just a small portion. How many do you feed? Um, you know, the number changes so often, but I don't. I really don't know. But I mentioned yes. uh, on another program that uh, Stephanie is the one that orders all the food, brings it in, sets it out, and... Um, and then I sleep till 1040 on Saturday, evidently. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rough weekend. You it's know, not as hard as it used to be. But no, but I, you know, I'm used to sitting in a chair for eight hours. Mm -hmm. So when I have to run around on concrete for eight hours a These night... These are really looking pretty. Yeah, the oil could have been a little hotter. But I'll get that one for you in just a minute. Okay. So I think that yes. was the last picture, yeah. So that's just a little behind the scenes, what goes on at Christian Television Yeah, Network. and uh, we need to uh, also get some pictures of all those volunteers who answer the phone. God yes, we have volunteers that come every single since night. day one, mm -hmm. since before day one. And some of the same volunteers are coming in, it just warms your heart. Well, you know what's so funny? Some of them call to see what food is being served on one <laughs> night. Cause that's how they pick which night they want to come and volunteer. Like you and me, yeah. <laughs> that's always the biggest question of the week. What are, uh, not who is. is the guest, but you know what, what are we having to eat? Before the telethon starts, she just has the I have a menu hands printed them out up. to everybody yeah, so we won't be bombarding her all the time. I'm going to go ahead and get this one out, but they could be a little more brown. But yeah, I, 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 when we finish those, I would crank the oil up. Yes. Yeah. But, and it should sit a little bit, but I Yes, need that's going to be hot. Care I need to get over there full. and talk to Heidi. Yes, very important stuff. It is hot. Say something. Yes, something. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. That's mm, tasty. Mm. 
I think Brooke should take a bite. Come here, Brooke. <laughs> Come here. Hurry Come up. On, hurry up. Hurry, hurry up. Take a bite. Take a bite. Take a bite. Hurry up. Right. You're from this, Maryland. This is the expert here. Pretend mm -hmm. it's crispier, though, okay? Yeah, pretend it's crispier. The flavor? Mm. That's good, right? All right? Turn around and say yes. Dawn? Yes. <laughs> thank you. My sister Dawn, thank yes, you. Yes, thank um, you, Dawn. It passed the Brooke test. Yes. <laughs> She's from Maryland. All That's right, you stay with us. I'm going to uh, join Heidi, and I think her coming on here once a month is one of the most important things we've ever done. I agree. So you might even want to get a pencil and paper, take a few notes. This is very important. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. All right, welcome back, Heidi. Thank you. Um, a lot has happened since you were here last oh time, but my. I want to read this quote from Matt Damon, who's a very famous actor. Most people know mm -hmm. who he is. And he said, I don't know where I would be if my teacher's job security was based on some standardized test. If they had to spend more time of their, more of their time drilling us and less time encouraging creativity and original ideas, I sure wouldn't be here. And I do know that, and he's a great actor, making a lot of money, and he is the uh, son of a teacher yes. as well. And I think that's pretty thought-provoking because that's exactly what's been stripped out of the teaching process: is mm. any any way to determine the bend of your child. The scripture that says, um, "Train up a child in the way that he, he should, should go." go. Um, I heard Chuck Swindoll say one time that that means according to his bend, you know, like a tree branch or however, the way that it's supposed to grow. Mm -hmm. And here they're, uh, with Common Core, they're trying to do cookie cutter people. Absolutely. So, yeah. well, you've been, you've been stirring it up since I saw you last. So I just want you to tell us about it. Okay. So first of all, uh, many of our viewers know that I've started, as you said, with my son and my daughter is actually here with us today because I opted her out of her third grade first day of math on her Florida standards assessment. And so um, the way you do that is that you um, have your child go and legally they need to, um, they need to participate in the Florida Standards Assessment. By doing that, they break the seal and then they push the test aside and don't answer any questions. They get a no score, which is better than a failing score. And for third graders today, the Senate Appropriations Committee is meeting again on Senate Bill 616 that Senator John Legg introduced. And, and Senator, this is for the state of Florida. The state of Florida. And uh, Senator Montfort and Senator Hayes are to be commended for pushing through these amendments that will actually take away the accountability um, on this particular assessment because it's it's not a valid assessment so let's just define high stakes because a lot of people who are new to what what are they why do they keep talking about high stakes well we want the high stakes removed a, a teacher an instructor her evaluation or his evaluation is 50 percent of their evaluation is based on this one exam the teachers the teachers how much value they have added to their students and there's this complicated formula that is totally, I, I really don't know who came up with it, but it's not fair. Now, um, your daughter, Alina, mm -hmm. right? Is, pronounce her name correctly. Is here today. Do you yes. know if others have opted out of the class? At my school, no. And my experience, my very first experience in opting our son out, our fifth grade son, is the Friday before I was opting him out on a Monday, our principal called me and she said, I want to let you know that we are in receipt of your letter stating that your son is not going to answer any questions on the Florida Standards Assessment. Uh, and then she said, I want to let you know that this is going to be the procedure. He will have to remain in the testing room for the duration of the exam. And that is 90 minutes. And I said, I'm going to come pick him up 30 minutes into the testing time. And she said, 
that will not be possible. And I said, I will come and pick him up. And she said, he will not be permitted to leave. And I said, what if I bring law enforcement? And she said, I don't know why you would want to go there. And I said, are you denying me access to my child? And I said, giving me chills. I said, what if a child gets sick? Because her stance was, well, that'll invalidate all the tests in the entire room. And I said, that is not true. Because what if a child gets sick and happens to throw up on their exam and they have to leave the testing environment? Their test will be invalidated, but no, nobody else's will. And she said, oh, I'll have to call you back. She called me back and she stood her ground and said, he will not be permitted to leave. And I said, I will show up with law enforcement and, and media. And then <laughs> it got a little heated. And she yes, said, no. And I said, yes. And she said, we'll see. She hung up, and the next phone call was from our superintendent, Kurt Browning, who said, um, there was a miscommunication. Oh, really? And <laughs> I miscommunicated, and she misunderstood. Now, I don't know how you misunderstand or miscommunicate. That I'm going to pick the kid up? That you will not permit a child to leave the classroom. Like, the words came out of her mouth. I will not send anyone to his classroom to get him, and he will not be permitted to leave. But then Mr. Browning said um, she was in error. And of course you can pick your child up because we cannot deny a parent access to their child. I cannot legally tell you that you can, he, you can do these things, that you can have him break the seal and then be removed, but you can do it. What's this breaking the seal? You have to break the seal so that the test is opened and they show that they have participated. Uh, I, I know that I, I hear my viewers a lot of times. They're wondering now why why do you not have the children take the test? Go back to day one when your child has a high IQ, both you and yeah. your husband do, and he brought home a math program, problem that you couldn't do. Was it third grade? It was fifth, fifth grade. No, it was fourth grade. It was last year. Okay. Just give a quick overview of that. Okay, so the very first thing is Titus comes and sits down and he's poring over his math homework and I said, what's wrong? And he said, I don't understand this. I said, wait a minute, you're a math genius. Like he's in fifth grade now and he's taking sixth grade math and he's got an A, almost an A. Um, so I was like, what do you mean you don't understand this? I said, let me see that. I said, okay, let me show you how I used to do it in school. And he goes, no, 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 I can't look at that. I'm like, why not? He goes, we are using strategies. And I said, strategies? what exactly are you doing? He goes, I can't remember. So nothing came home. There's no parent's guide to show us how to help them on their math. So if you have a parent that's completely detached, these kids are all on their own when they come home and they are confused because of the strategies. Well, also, um, I was looking, uh, something that um, this uh, mother was very upset because the child was told, do not tell anything about the test. Do not tell anything about that. Mm -hmm. And she was also upset because the label that goes with the test was that it had the last four numbers of the social security yes. belonging to the child. Yes. Now that ought to make your blood curdle. If you at any point gave the school your child's social security number when you registered them, their social, the last four digits, and their, the full social will be in the system. So I actually had to email our test administrator and I said, can you kindly go into the TIDE system and print out labels with our children's school ID number and not their socials? She goes, I'll do that right away. So that confirmed to me that our children's socials were actually used as an identifier on the Florida Standards Assessment. And yes, the children, even though they are under 18, are given an acknowledgement to sign. It is not a legally binding document, but just by virtue of giving this to the child, saying, I promise that this is classified information and I will not share any of this with anyone outside of this room. The child signs that. The child signs it. You know, this whole thing, it just doesn't pass the smell test. And you keep thinking, and you try to go back and back, and I, I did some research, and, and it showed all the people involved, not one of them was a teacher, uh, setting up all this education for, for the, the entire country uh, because there's money attached. There's federal money attached, yes. and that's where, that's where the rub is. That's why the states are agreeing to this. I believe I read somewhere that all but seven states have adopted it. 
we have got to talk to our senators. We have to talk to our state legislators. Now, last week, I'm, I've been pretty diligent, diligent about watching these appropriations committee meetings and the education uh, committee meetings that are the state, of the state of Florida. You can watch them on Florida Channel Live. And I mean, the discussions that they are having, like they have determined that this Florida standards assessment is not a valid assessment. It has not been psychometrically validated. So the bill that they are voting on today in the Senate Appropriations Committee with the amendments that say that there needs to be a third party non-involved company that psychometrically validates this exam that is now being administered to our children with all the high stakes attached to it. Like third graders could be retained if they fail this exam. That's why I opted my they daughter could, They could be held back because of one test? Yes. That's, that's just frightening. And it, hasn't it stripped away everything else that all of the concentration goes in this? I mean, yeah. are, are they still getting recess and are they still getting... Some counties don't give recess, but I can tell you that once January rolls around, really the focus of the entire school year is on this one assessment. It's not let's work as well as best as we can to attain the standards. It's how can we work the how can we learn the standards well enough to take this test? It's all about test taking. And somebody, I think somebody said to me um, recently, well, I'm going to have my child take this exam because they're going to need to know how to take exams throughout life. And I'm like, they need to learn how to be street smart and common sense, not common core sense. Mm -hmm. Because life is not, it is not, does not revolve around the common core as they want it to. But I am so appalled at the politicians who will say one thing, do another, and not listen to their constituents. But you have to hammer them. You have to Twitter, Facebook, email, phone calls, letters, everything. And not just parents. Anybody who owns a home, is their property taxes are paying for this education I was reform. just thinking of that. They want this federal money. Of all the money they extract out of me for a townhouse... Uh, for my property taxes every year, how much money do they need? Ugh. Just every every dime they can get, I guess. Let me tell you. Oh, we didn't we didn't even talk about the disaster that happened at the beginning of the testing um, that happened in March. First of all, it's the sixth month of the school year, and they're evaluating the children on an entire year of instruction that they didn't get yet. And they're supposed to do really great, and the teachers are being evaluated. So there was there were hackers that hacked the system. Do you know what they've ended up calling it in the news? Glitches. No kidding. Hackers. And the last time you were on here, they're talking about some big test that was supposed to really tell you everything you needed to know about how the child's progressing, but the test hadn't even been formulated yet. There, there was no test. They just talked about a test. And this is the test. I had an interesting uh, Sunday, this last Sunday. My daughter and I got to take care of two of my little great-grandchildren, four and two, oh my. It was so much fun. And uh, we took them to this uh, wonderful playground. I tell you, and it had a nature walk. I said, I'm so thankful that my taxes would be going to something like this. Mm. And um, so we were chasing them all over the place, but I started eavesdropping on two people. They were not a couple. There was a father and there was a mother, but obviously they were obviously not married or anything, didn't have the same children. They were talking about Common Core, and I really perked up my... They were so upset, and you got the feeling they were helpless. What, what in the world can we do? And also, I have someone very close to me in the public school system, and he said, teachers are quitting. Mm -hmm. He had heard just uh, the last week of three that were leaving a school close by where he works. And so it looks to me like it's something that could just destroy our educational system. It can, because how would you like to be evaluated on one exam? And in high school, I, I just talked to a high school teacher, our local high school, and she said, do you know that I'm evaluated on ninth graders, ch students that I've never even instructed on this exam, mm -hmm. I teach 11th and 12th graders, but I'm evaluated on their test scores, and I've never even sat, I've never been in front of them ever mm -hmm. to instruct them. So uh, the losers are both the, the uh, teachers and the students, mm -hmm. because everything for both of them is hanging on 
a test that hasn't even really been put together right or thoroughly bell no, vetted. No, it's, it's, it, I have a girlfriend who said it's the, uh, flying an airplane while it's still under construction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you would, uh, I, I, my first uh, advice would be know what's going on. I mean, it's been headlines in our paper here recently. Know what's going on. More and more people are learning about it because of the political system. Mm -hmm. And uh, so start there and the things that Heidi has said and, and get involved. It's still the people's voice. Your girl is here. We need to, Elena, come over here. Yeah, she, here's the girl who's opting out of the test today. <laughs> are you having a good day with your mom? Yeah, yeah. What grade are you in? Third. Third? You like school? Good, good. I uh, Honor roll. Just got it. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely wonderful. And the two blonde Swedish <laughs> <laughs> girls. I'm so proud of her. But, um, you know, when you think of our children and their future and, and you compare it to the education you received in the public school. I always went to public school. And uh, we're two generations here. And to think uh, that it is being just dissembled and, and it's not being rebuilt no. in, in a way for, for kids to really learn. And you know what, Arthelene, really, really, public education was put here for us, the people. And with the push for charter schools and private schools, they're ripping public schools out of our hands. And it's not fair. And I'm not ready to jump ship yet. And the first um, primer that they used to read was all scripture that built the greatest country that's ever been, and it's losing that place right now. Uh, we're almost out of time, but one thing uh, they are always talking about is critical thinking, so I looked it up. Uh, is self-directed, self-disciplined, self-motivated, self-corrective. I'm sorry, that doesn't make sense. Well, that's what we're doing today. That's, it. <laughs> that's what you're doing today. <laughs> I hope that uh, you will be sure and join us next time. Heidi, we'll be back in another month and uh, she keeps collecting information on this. I think it's very, very important and you should be concerned when you have uh, nieces and nephews and grandchildren and children uh, in school. There's nothing more important than our children and uh, they need to have the right education and we can't sit and just let this happen, friends. Hey, join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.